All right, guys, just installed AI in the studio. Brick science. How can I assist you? You, 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 you. Stop. You, no, you, stop. You, 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 you. you, you. Whoops. Today, I'm gonna build a Lego vending machine inside of a mini fridge. Here's how. <laughs> Not a good time to laugh. This is a mini fridge and it keeps drinks cold already. My plan is to build a false wall inside of it with some mechanical components on the back so that you can choose and release each soda after you pay. And for this, we're gonna be using miniature sodas. So the first step in making this thing is we need to measure it. I built this Lego measuring rod. It's got a bunch of numbers on it. We need to see how big we're gonna build this thing to put it inside the fridge. Honestly, this thing is quite spacious on the inside. So now we need to build a base for the inside and start building up the brick wall with the clear section so we can actually see the sodas. For the colors for this thing, we're gonna make it red and white because red and white just screams vending mach machine. So, let's start by building a wall in the front so we can actually receive the sodas. So we want an opening. On top of this thing, we're gonna make a really cool mechanism that actually rotates using a button on the front. So it'll rotate a rack with a bunch of sodas on it and you can choose which one you want to fall down. We're gonna have a coin rejection system and everything, so we'll leave space here for that. But that should be pretty simple later on. Now we just gotta lock everything down and make sure that it sticks. overlapping all the bricks by at least two studs and that will make it so that everything sits nicely and it won't fall apart when we lift it up. Okay, so now that we built the walls up a little more, we need to make the coin rejection mechanism. Back when I watched a lot of LEGO candy machine videos, I invented this coin rejection mechanism, which is pretty simple for quarters. What you do is you take two of these things with the grooves and you add two round bricks, two more rounded bricks, and then two rounded plates. And you cap that off like that. And this is the perfect size to allow quarters to slide across it without falling through, just like that. You can see here, nickels fall through, dimes fall through, pennies fall through, but quarters ride smoothly into the drawer where you can pick it up later. The rest of them that don't pass this gap fall down in here, hit a little ramp, and then be returned to the customer. So we just need to put a ramp like right here so that we can return the coins to the customer. Put those right there. And then put this like that. Angle this like this. So right here, we have this nice smooth design right there and it's looking pretty good, but what if we put this right there? Now it looks even better. Check that out. Now, if we take our dime, it falls down right there because it doesn't slide across. For all you who like to steal stuff, but quarters go right into our collection system and we'll hit a light sensor, which is located here. Anything else will not hit the light sensor. Now we just gotta build a drawer. Push that little tile, we can grip that, and then put this on the side, like this. All right, so now we have our mechanism. We have our drawer right here, as you can see, it just pulls out like that. This coin rejection mechanism will go into the drawer. Now we just gotta finish building up this wall and add the viewing station, which will be made of clear Lego pieces. So let's do that. I went on BrickLink and I found some clear Lego pieces. These are like little windows and there's actually a lot more than I thought. So we're going to go all the way across this and all the way up to here with this window. I'm gonna make this a little bigger cause that'll look a lot better. Cool. So this is a little sneaky guys. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this right here and then we can overlap them so that they'll lock together. We simply take something like this, put it right there. And now that is covered up and we can do that all the way around the frame of it and it'll look really nice and be sturdy and lock together. So it's looking really good, we gotta keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna do a test fit just to see what we're looking like here. It's gonna look pretty sick in there, but we should probably move this window up higher. We got a long ways to go here. Okay, so we finished our glass panel, made it a little bigger, and used up all the pieces. So check this out. This is right there. Doesn't that look good, guys? Great, wow. I know it looks a little boring, but we gotta build up the walls and then we gotta add in the actual components and the function, which is gonna sit on top of this thing. So I'm glad we made that sturdy. We might have room for soda storage on top, but I'm not sure. All right, so the last thing we need to do before we can complete the aesthetic of this is fill this in with white tiles. Once we fill that in with white tiles, the cover of this thing will be completely done and we need to work on the electronics and the mechanism on the inside. Okay, so there we have our little area that they will fall down into. And you may notice there's a little keyboard right there. Well, that's because I put it in and I didn't see it and then I found it and I was like, yeah. Now we gotta build the mechanism. All right, 
can't see. <laughs> Alright, so I've built this thing up a little bit more. As you can see, it's very large, and I'm having trouble seeing over it, so that's nice. Temporarily, I'm just going to uh, take this off, because then we can see each other. So we have here this platform. We have this opening right here, which the sodas are going to fall into. So the plan is to put all the sodas into a revolver type thing that will rotate, and there'll be a little release on this side, which will fold down and allow the sodas to fall into the place where you grab it. But that will only be activated once, maybe two quarters, fall into this machine. These are the small soda cans I could find, so these are the flavors we're going to work with. Essentially, each one will just drop down and probably not explode. It shouldn't be an issue. So we need to start working on the casing that's going to hold all of these. We just need to build a frame around this to kind of hold them in. Please technic. We want the soda to be visible because there's going to be, you know, clear pieces on the outside of the machine. So we just need to find some sort of piece that can actually make a shape that divides by eight. We put a bunch of these together. I think we just did it. Let me just quickly prototype this. <laughs> I'm really just making this up as I go. I have like an idea for the mechanism, but I don't know how we'll do it necessarily. And we lock it all together with these black pieces again. Now we have this. This spins. And the way we're going to make that spin... Alright, so I don't know how we're going to make a spin, but will these fit? Yeah, and then all we have to do is just add a couple bumpers on the inside of these so that when you spin this, they don't all slide out. Now we spin this. Will it escape? The answer is no, it will not. We add some of these bricks in, that'll add a lot of coolness to it. Cool, all right, now we have this thing that holds the sodas and it looks a lot cooler than it did a second ago. Here we have our super motor, which we can put on top of this and hopefully spin it, but I'm gonna prototype test it with our controller super motor. Doesn't quite have enough torque. Since torque is important, let's use a gear ratio. Probably the worm gear. Now we'll turn this. Spins this very slow, but there's a lot more torque. Turn this into a steel axle. Let's try that. We just have to hook it up to a remote so that we can put the remote as the button. And we hook each battery box up to one of these. That'll make it so each one of these motors is getting an equal power from one battery box. And here we go. Ow. Don't get your finger stuck in the motor. We have this thing here. Put this right here. That is literally like the perfect size. The next step is we need to build the trap door. To make the trap door work, we're gonna use two EV3 motors. Mount these in the floor under these areas that I totally plan to be removable. These two motors are gonna be hooked up to my EV3. In the same EV3, we're going to need a color sensor for the coin reader, and we're gonna need a button sensor that'll trigger the trap door, but it won't work unless the coin meter reads coins coming into the machine. That's basically how it's gonna work. So now we need to make a trap door with these motors. So if we put some axles inside of these things, like this, and we add a few of these, and we also need to make it as flat as possible so that the sodas kind of skid over it easily. There, now that will sit flush. So now we have the trap door. This, it's in here. I knew I shouldn't have done such a great job designing this. What's wrong with me? All right, guys, we have this thing that folds down like this to release the sodas, and that actually works and is proven when I put a soda right here, this thing starts falling down, the soda slides out of, it just explodes. I'm really realizing we need a place to put the E3, because <laughs> I forgot. This is why we plan ahead, so we don't have to spend hours trying to fix one simple thing. The light sensor will go right here, just like that. So now we need to mount the button for the EV3, and we need to mount the remote. This is the switch. Beautiful. That shouldn't mess with the can, hopefully. Now this button clicks in right there, and then we take this, you can see, it presses. Stop! Uh, darn it. Maybe we should have some sort of pillow down there for when these fall. Short intermission while I clean this up. All right, now that we've cleaned that up, ish. Now we need two layers of plates and one layer of tiles across this whole thing. Now to mount this thing onto this, all we gotta do is add this one simple piece like this and cover the rest with tiles. This thing snaps on to this. It still spins, but it just holds it on there. So now, put this thing in here. Okay, now we've made it to the point where we can actually start coding. We're done. Okay, that didn't actually, I have to actually do it now.
So I'm having an issue with this trap door where sodas are kind of heavy, so they push it down. It makes it so that when the revolver is spinning around, they actually get stuck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add in these worm gears to the motors, because as you can see with worm gears, you can't turn this gear. It's just not possible. So that will keep this thing up. The motor that's gonna be attached to this will be able to turn, which will still rotate it. Also tried using slopes and that didn't work because it would get more stuck. So I'm gonna try that and see how it works. All right, we just fixed it. Check it out. They roll super smoothly across that. Now we just gotta make an adjustment to the code for the motors to account for the worm gear ratio. And then we should be able to actually test this thing for real. Now I'm gonna show you guys the mechanics behind this thing that actually makes it work. There's a USB battery bank right here and you just plug that in via USB and the lights turn on, so that's pretty cool. You can also move the sodas without having to pay, so it's still a cool function. It rejects pennies, which fall through, nickels, and dimes. As you can see, quarters though, go right down and get triggered by the light sensor. There's a little curved piece right there that makes it so you can effortlessly slide the soda cans over it. You see here the worm gear that's powering the whole thing. And then for the trap door, there's two more worm gears right here and here that actually hold the thing up. And if you put your hand or a towel down here, it won't explode. Trap door releases it, and there you go, you have a cold soda. To get your coins out, you just slide it out of the fridge a little and then grab this little drawer, which has a bunch of quarters in it. So we're gonna put it inside the fridge, but first we need to move it over here. Ella, I just need you here so that I feel less okay. and do everything for this channel. Now I need you to hold it up. Alright, this goes in here. And that goes in there like that. Alright, now we just gotta plug it in and turn it on and then wait four hours for the sodas to cool. Do I open the thing? Yeah. So you just open it and then there's coins right there. You can select which one you want with that little black knob, and then you just center it over the little trap door. <gasps> Satisfying. I'm not just going for the sprite. Yeah, you want to make sure to catch it when so it falls out. So satisfying. And it resets. Wow, well, like, that is so cool. Dang. I think this thing turned out honestly super sick. You can see it's 46 degrees, so like not super cold, but this fridge only gets so cold. It stays in the fridge, and as you can see. This thing is so cool, like honestly. My favorite part is probably just watching the sodas get chosen here. I think this thing turned out really cool, you guys. Huge thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, check out one of these two videos on both sides, they're popping up right now. I really think you'll enjoy them. Also, don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, Crazy Kai's Bricklink Store, for your Lego brick needs. You can check them out by clicking the link down in the description or by clicking this button right here on the screen. See ya.